Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Rojiha, and I am a PhD student from the University of Leeds. And this morning, I will present you um, my group's work related uh, to the uh, modeling of water waves for sheep, uh, shallow and deep water dynamics. And I will first introduce you what exactly are wave tanks. So in maritime industry, they have different kind of wave tanks to simulate different kind of water dynamics. So let's say if they want to simulate, uh, exper experimentally simulate uh, shallow water dynamics, then they will have a piston wave maker at one side and then wave uh, a beach to absorb uh, the reflected waves on the other side. And if they want to have uh, deep water uh, dynamic simulation, then they will have a wave flap wave maker. So you can see they use these kind of wave makers to study water to water interaction and also water to structure interaction. However, there is a challenge or there are challenges associated with these wave tanks and they are related to uh, budget and time. One, building these facilities is not cheap. And second, uh, once you have these facilities, then running experiments is also very costly and time taking. Therefore, you can't do a lot of uh, test cases uh, to know, uh, to test your model in a different uh, condition. And then you, we propose that why don't we develop a numerical wave tank and carry out uh, a lot of simulations on the computer. And once you are happy with your different design, you can go to the wave tank and then you can do a limited uh, model test and then you can go and actually build the uh, structure. So this presentation is about the mathematical and numerical modeling of water waves which are generated by these numerical wave tanks. And we are also sharing uh, uh, an implementation technique for these equations in Firebreak, which is uh, novel or different than the traditional approach. So I will explain later. First, the mathematical uh, model of these waves depends on variational principle of potential flow theory. So it means uh, we say that we neglect viscosity. We say that the flow is irrotational and incompressible. And as this equation is continuous in space and time, therefore we need to discretize it in space and as well as in time. And for space discretization, we, we are needing, uh, using finite element method and therefore we need to maintain five rate. And for uh, time discretization, we are using some special time, uh, geometric time integrators that are special for Hamiltonian system and they try to conserve the energy of the system. And it could also be first order, second order, uh, so you have different choices. Our final goal uh, is to um, develop a wave tank that is driven by a wave flap wave maker and it can simulate deep water dynamics because we have already accomplished the goal in our previous uh, PhD project uh, to simulate shallow water dynamics and the wave maker is driven by a distant wave maker. So we want to increase the complexity of the problem. However, we want to achieve this goal by using this new implementation technique. That's why we are starting with a very simple shallow water case, linear, no wave maker, and then we gradually increase the complexity and until we, until we find our, or develop our wave tank with uh, no linear potential flow. So what you see in equation one is the variational principle for linear shallow water equations. And um, it's constructed uh, in a way that it uh, uh, accounts for the conservation of energy of the system. And uh, it also includes the terms that uh, satisfy the boundary condition. So when you take the variation of this uh, VP, uh, then you obtain equations of motion, the kinematic, dynamic, and uh, the boundary condition at the two ends of the uh, domain. So now I will explain what is traditional approach first. So the traditional way is like you derive the weak formulations. So you take variations of your VP with respect to variables, and then you evaluate the boundary condition, and then you do the time, integra uh, time discretization of your weak formulation, which are shown in three and four. 
and then you explicitly uh, type this uh, time discretized weak formulation firebreak. So <clears throat> our idea was, <clears throat> why don't we use time discretized VP instead of using a time continuous VP? And the advantage is you can use FD derivative function in firebreak, and then you take variation with respect to, let's say, phi n and e tan plus 1, and you recover the same um, equation that are shown in 3, 4. So mathematically, by direct derivation, we can easily prove that. And the question was, can we also get the same result if when implemented in firebreak? So we implemented the two approaches, and we found that, yes, they are same because the difference in two approaches is up to machine precision. For, so for eta is 10 raised to power minus 30, and for phi is 10 raised to power minus 16. And we also did a comparison with the exact solution because for this simple case we have exact solution. So we are happy with our new approach and it means we can go with slightly more complex model which is non-linear and also involve a moving domain which is fist and weight maker. So it's shown in, the VP for this problem is shown in, in equation seven. And now you can see there's an additional term at the end, which is R dot. It shows that this is the velocity of the wave maker and it satisfies the boundary condition that the velocity of water in X direction should be equal to the velocity of wave. Okay. So on one uh, hand, you'd see this is a piston wave maker. Uh, it translates in X direction and uh, its, its motion is a function of time. And because we know this is a time dependent domain, so we must uh, transform this domain into a stationary one to solve our equations. And for that, we have coordinate transformation. So we um, derive this coordinate transformation, we implement into the VP. Seven, and then we obtain a new VP, which is more lengthy and complex than the original time-dependent time -dependent problem. And then we derive weak formulation, we discretize and implement. So for the new approach, we have this new time-discretized uh, VP for the stationary domain. So once uh, we had the results with that, that I will show at the end of this presentation, we uh, took a step forward and we did non-linear potential flow equation. And the difference in shallow water and potential flow is that phi here is now a function of x, y, z, and t, whereas in shallow water it was a function of x, y, and t. So now we are also including the effect of uh, depth. And again, uh, it's moving domain, so we use transformation of equation, we get a stationary domain, and just to sh show you how complex equations can get, um, I'm doing a comparison of traditional and uh, new approach. So time discretized weak formulation derived by using traditional approach are shown on the left column, whereas the new approach is shown in the right hand side. So you see how these lengthy equations are just replaced by some short formulation and fire rate or some, a couple of lines. And the challenge was that not only deriving this equation by hand was a lengthy and time-taking task, but also implementing in, in fire rate was a very long uh, task. So it, our senior uh, or previous PhD uh, student, she derived these equations, which are shown on the left column, and implemented explicitly in fire rate. So the code is very long, and my colleague Yang will explain more about this. And now we have the same results by using these few lines of code. And finally, then we had a good we had good results with piston wave maker. We took our step forward with wave flat wave maker. I won't show you the equations here, but I just want to highlight what exactly was the challenge. The challenge was now the motion of wave maker is depending on time and z-axis. It means that transformation equations are even more complex than the piston wave maker case. And then VP becomes more complex. Therefore, uh, this new technique of implementing the equation really helped us to implement uh, uh, this wave flat wave maker in fire 
Now I show some results. For the piston wave maker, linear, nonlinear, and nonlinear potential flow, you see uh, this is a simulation that we run for two time period. So the wave maker was, uh, the length was chosen in a way that after two time period it ends. And since it doesn't have any beach to absorb reflecting waves, so we just end the simulation here so we don't see any reflecting waves. And the idea was to observe the main or general physics of the wave maker motion. So we, at first we start the wave maker, we make it run for one time period, and therefore you see this um, free surface elevation, one wave, and then we stop the wave maker, but we let the simulation run, and we see the same wave is translating along the axis of the wave tank. Second, we did more uh, a lengthier case with wave lab wave, uh, maker case, so we can monitor how energy is changing in the system. So we ran it for a much longer time, 28 TP. That's why for uh, eta and phi, you see a lot of wave because now we have reflected wave, and so you see a very complex pattern. But for in energy, we saw something really interesting. You see that at first it's increasing. It's increasing because when we turn the wave maker on, it's adding energy into the system. So energy is increasing, increasing. And then when we stop wave maker, it just stays at one point. So the energy is not kind of leaving, it's still in the system. Although we had a discussion with Colin and he explained that it's not completely or mathematically conserved because we still see small uh, variations, but generally, globally, you can see okay, we are happy with the energy. So, yes, we uh, successfully developed these uh, wave tanks, but for the wave platform, we still need to do a validation study with experimental data. We also need to improve this wave tank by um, uh, including parameterization for wave breaking and we also want to validate against experimental data. Yeah. And also want to include a beach. So that's all, thank you. non-wave tank situations like I noticed that you're trying to replicate the area of a physical wave tank but a physical wave tank that's self temp to replicate the sea so is it possible to use your techniques to directly model the types of waves on the sea without kind of going through this intermediate simulation um so no it's not always sea because okay. uh sometimes uh we want to control but in sea it's like more rough so we want to see how the structure will behave for regular, irregular, and then sometimes we also want to create wave impact loading. So it's very controlled and then they have special functions that generate these uh, waves in, in the wave tank. Okay, so you have the control function for the yes. piston, so it's easy to use that rather than figure out separate initial yes, conditions. Yes, yes, yes. That makes sense. Okay, so yes, that's just sort of your boundary condition, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I really like this time script very original pro, uh, problem thing that's really neat. Uh, I reckon you can actually go one step further, mm -hmm. which is so this is a thing out there called Erkson, which Rob Kirby did, which um, gives you a DT symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think if you use Erkson, what you could actually do is write the um, time continuous variational problem first. Mm -hmm. And then transform the time continuous variational problem to the time discrete problem automatically. Oh, that's okay. what the project student did that you can't remember still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, they, they, they enabled that to that facility. We need to dig out this bit this, this, this on the branch. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing um, like. I'm going to do it again. Here they're just the 
exactly the time. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. both. Right. So, um, <laughs> so if you wrote, um, so when, because you're you were doing explicit time discretization by hand, right? Into the. Mm, yes. Yeah, exactly. So, um, what you can do because Rob has given us effectively that delta t symbol. Mm -hmm. Rob's given us a way that you could actually write that down. Now, mm -hmm. FireDrake can't process that, but that's okay because what you do is you use um, your student. Sorry? You use the production student. <laughs> you, use your, um, you, you can use UFL replace mm -hmm. to, um, insert, uh, to insert a, the, the um, time, to replace the time derivative with the, the mm -hmm. final different time derivative and to replace uh, the state variables and all the other terms with whichever combination of state variables you're... Okay, um, so um, do you have any documentation where I can read more about this? Because then I, I will understand, is it like compatible with our problem? Um, yeah, and because, so... Um, because when we derive it by hand, we also do a check uh, that we are obtaining the same equation that we, will, that we should obtain by using the traditional approach. Uh, because if we have to write this time discretized BP in a smart way, like it, it should give, like this certain go and back to check if we really obtain that. Right, but that's the, I mean, it's the same point of optimize, uh, automation as the next layer down, right? As long as your, as long as your yeah. automation rules are right, you know you never make that mistake ever again. Yeah. Um, and also it means you can write down one variational <laughs> principle and then swap out the time stepping yeah. methods without rewriting. Without re yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I will look into it. Thank you. Okay, thank you.